Hey my little peacheroonies and welcome to a fun slash dark challenge because if you guys watched my stream on Twitch, I have built a nuclear bunker that is designed to survive an apocalypse. I've gone ahead and placed it in Strangerville because this feels like the place where something is most likely to go wrong. You of course have the secret lab here, the redacted secret lab. And the story we are going with is a terrible incident happened at the lab. There was a nuclear event and it blasted, smashed everything in the town, which is why I've removed absolutely everything. However, there was like a rock here, which I'll show you when we get into the bunker, and that is what protected not him. He's not going to be there. Ignore him. And um, that is what protected a few sims that managed to get into the bunker, and then the story, the challenge, will be one of the descendants of those survivors. So, what we are going to be doing is a seven-day survival challenge based on the Fallout game series. If you've never played Fallout, it is a very similar story. There was a nuclear event, and your character comes out of the bunker, and tries to survive in the wasteland that is like remains of the world. We are going to be doing most of our challenge trying to survive inside the bunker, however. And I have a whole story of what is going to happen. So we will be selecting a survivor, but just to give you guys a little bit of a rundown. Day one, our survivor is alone in the bunker. Everybody else has died, so it's up to them to keep trying to survive. So we'll be settling into the bunker with them. They will have already grown up there, but we'll be starting to grow fruit and veg on day one. Day two is kind of when things are gonna get hard because we might have had full starts on day one, but it takes a couple of days for things to grow in The Sims, so will starvation kick in? Day three, there's gonna be a little bit of spanner in the works because a survivor will appear and beg for entry into the bunker because they can't survive for much longer on the surface should we let them in or not? Day four, spoiler alert, we will let the survivor in, but that will start a radiation leak into the bunker. So that is how far we're going to get in the first half of the challenge. It's a seven day challenge. So I'll explain what is going to happen in the second half when we get to it, if we get to it, because on day four, when the radiation leaks in, I'm going to be switching on the life's tragedies mod, which means there is a chance that the radiation could kill our sim. So if you guys are excited for this challenge, please go ahead and give it a big cheeky thumbs up and make sure you give it a share. And if you're not yet, subscribed make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe to the channel so make sure you don't miss part two of this challenge i'm gonna upload the bunker as well so if you guys want to play along you can do so let's go in the gallery i'm gonna use the claire siobhan npc's tag and let's find our uh, probably unlucky survivor let's face it and i'm looking for a girl survivor someone who looks pretty tough like they're gonna be able to survive a week in the bunker because that's how we win the challenge. We win the challenge if we survive all the way to the end. Ooh, this sim has been specifically uploaded to be an apocalypse survivor by Laurie S1237. And she's come to my game without all of her CC. However, she's got an army vibe look, which I think is gonna be important. And also makes sense as to why she would have been in the bunker because her like grandparents or parents, depending on how long they've been under there. Radiation takes a while. I'm gonna say it was her parents though. Uh, she comes from a military background, which is why she'd have been in the bunker in the first place. So, okay, so give another little scar on her nose because I don't feel like in a bunker. Although it does have a medical wing, I just feel like life would be kind of tough down there. I've also not put any makeups on her. I've just given her lip details because why would you need to put makeup on? You're in a bunker, you know? And I didn't have the original hair, but I'm going to try and grab something similar. Okay, so we've got our survivor. I feel like her original hair was something like this and it matches her brows. I'm sorry in advance for what what we're about to put you through, Survivor. One fun thing I have done is, hopefully it's gonna show up. I've downloaded a Fallout jumpsuit, which is the jumpsuit you wear in Fallout, just as a little kind of funny Easter egg if you do play Fallout. And also we'll give her um, a little Pip-Boy too. A Pip-Boy in Fallout kind of tells you, like you can see it lit up on the arm. Tells you a lot of the stuff you need to know. You use it to level up and it will tell you your stats. It's got the, it the SAT system that helps you like, aim at people and stuff. I feel like that goes through the Pip-Boy too. But anyway, I, I just kind of thought it would be kind of fun to go all in. Okay, so I'm super excited. I'm also sad for her. I want her to survive, but the chances are kind of low. But it's a challenge. It's meant to be difficult. Let's go ahead and send Charlie Newsom. That's her name. Charlie's a really cool name. I love that. And let's begin our Fallout style nuclear bunker apocalypse challenge. That is a mouthful. So just that you guys can see how the bunker looks. The lab is like over there uh, in that crater. And this rock here is what protected us from the blast. And this is our little nuclear bunker. So I put, I put like loads of effort in the stream to try to make it all make sense. Cause like where the blast like shot down past the rock, the truck that got turned over like was like the blast went 
and turned over that truck, but our little bunker was safe. There's stuff growing as a result of the radiation, kind of also in Fallout, things get messed up, like organisms get messed up because of the radiation. We've got like a radio tower here where we desperately try and get help. This is a water tower. Here are the pipes that connect the water tower to our little bunker. And here is the vault door to stop people getting in our vault. She's got a vault 101 jumpsuit on, so this is vault 101. There was probably a load of vaults scattered all over the place. Also, it's really annoying that I strip all the buildings, but it still puts them all there. But just ignore that, okay? And there's also a little um, kind of thing there for you to get deradiated or like checked before you go into the vault as well. Obviously, it hasn't been used in a long time because nobody has been in or out. You can also see here, there is like a, a little sort of like glass open in here. And that's because I don't know how well you can tell. But if you go all the way down there, that is actually where the vault is. So let me go ahead and show you guys because once you come inside here, there is all these things on the wall here that will send a jet of air to like deradiate you or decontaminate you. And then you go underground. And this is actually our vault. It goes four levels down because that's the maximum amount I can go down in The Sims. And this is our water being transported all the way to the bottom. These are just like the stairs that go all the way down with a creepy red glow. And then once you get down the stairs, you are in the vault. So this right here is the main hub of the vault. This actually is a... Uh, oh, we need to go ahead and turn that on because this is what powers the whole of the vault. It's like its little energy source in the hub. We've got a kickboxing thing here to try and stay active and fit. Wait, I'm going to pause it because we need to be doing stuff in a second. We've got a robot here which will help us around the vault. Also potentially be our only friend. We've got a Roomba because obvious reasons. Sciencey stuff, the listening equipment so we can try and see with the radio tower if there is anybody out there. Then we've got a little rec room. I realized afterwards I forgot to put a sink in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop a sink in this room real quick because otherwise she won't be able to like wash her dishes and stuff and that could get really annoying. So we'll just put a super basic little sink here. And then this is like a storage room. It also has the medical bay, which is what fixed her face when she uh, damaged it. And on this side, you've got her little bedroom here. She's about to go and read herself a book. Look how cool her outfit looks. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I've added like, you see this area here, a little bit of personalization because the whole place is like a military bunker, right? So it's kind of going to be sad and depressing looking. It's also been underground for what, like 30 years. So it's looking kind of like grotty and gross. She's probably not the first person to sleep in this bed. I don't know what's happened to the rest of the bunker. Maybe there was a cave in, maybe it got contaminated. So we had to shut it off. But here is her bedroom. And then this is the grow room where the glass upstairs links down to the grow room. These are all mirrored to try and maximize the amount of glass, amount of light you get into here. And these are the computers that help power all of the water and stuff in here. So I downloaded some extra little fallout stuff. Oh my gosh, a radiated Nuka-Cola. Oh my God, that's really cool. Nuka-Cola is again from Fallout. You actually use the cups as a form of currency. This one also glows because it's radiated. Hopefully it's staying safe inside the glass there. Oh my gosh, and there's also a red version. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> Look. Nuka Cola. Oh, Nuka Cherry. And the original Nuka Cola there too. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's also the radio from Fallout. Oh, sorry. This has just turned into me kind of like fangirling over a game I've tried to play so many times and I've been too scared to play it every single time. But look, do I think it looks like it's got a little face? <laughs> okay, so I've popped some little posters on the wall there. Hopefully a little bit of an Easter egg if you do enjoy Fallout. But one of the most important things we have to do is try and grow our own food because I feel like hunger, hunger is going to be the first thing that hits us. So I'm going to purchase fruit and veg. Allow her to get one of each of these. We'll open these seeds packs and then we will get planting and just hope that the stuff that we grow is going to actually grow in time to keep us alive because that is the risk. I feel like grapes take a while so that might be a rip right there. So this is day one. The only thing she needs to do today is get stuff planted so she can have the best possible chance of survival and just kind of acquaint us more than her because she grew up here but it's acquainting us with the fallout vault. Honestly, I feel like I would go a little bit mad down here if it was me personally. All on my own would be the biggest thing. Oh, apples aren't gonna work in there. Okay. She does have a little robot to talk to, which is the servo here. And you guys said I needed to get a robotic station to actually activate him. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, he's all slotted in now, so we should be able to activate him. Once we finish doing our little bit of planting, he, I don't think, can go through walls. So he stays in this room, but he can, like, maintain the energy and keep the whole thing running. I also feel like when things do start going wrong, he will be like, danger, danger, radiation, radiation. Are you sure you want to activate the servo? Okay, I'm a little bit worried. Does this mean that servo could be evil? I don't know. We've never had one before. I'm gonna make this. I'm just gonna do this. Okay, I have no idea which one I clicked. So that's fun. I guess we'll be able to sell by the 
boys, potentially. But we're turning on Servo to help us maintain the bunker. Oh my gosh. Does that work? <gasps> What? <laughs> Why is it not a robot anymore? I am literally so confused by what I've just watched. Why is it not a robot? It just w got up and left. Okay, well, that was uh, meant to be my little robo friend. Looks like it's just gonna be the Roomba instead. And as I said, first day is just getting ready. It's actually really hot outside, but of course, down here, we're not gonna feel the heat. All we feel is that gentle breeze of the recycled air, and all we hear is the hum of the machinery. Oh, wow. She looks a bit freaked out. Oh, I don't know what she's freaking out about. Is it the server? Is that server actually going to return and kill me? Because it kind of feels like it might do. Oh, she's gone in to go have a conversation with the toilet. I gave her the toilet that lets her talk to her because I feel like she would definitely start to get very, very bored down here. She's feeling overheated. I don't know how, since it should be nice and cool down here. Unless being underground like that is actually a little bit hot and stuffy. I'm going to take pity on her and I will allow her to have this little guy here. We'll put it in, obviously, the main hub and we can go ahead and switch it to cooler. Get this little energy thing fired up. Oh my gosh, look at the Roomba. Why do I find the Roomba so cute? Oh, look at it. We literally have one of these and it's definitely not as cute as this. All it ever says is like, battery low. New, 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 new. That's all I ever hear. I'm still really freaked out by the whole robot situation. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And I don't know why she's feeling sick. Look, these stomach gurgles don't sound good. There's no radiation down here just yet, but maybe... A whole- oh no. A whole lifetime of living underground has made us sick? Honestly, I don't know why she's just done that. I don't know why she just threw up, but it's super concerning. Also, there's no food, so unless this starts growing, there's no option for food. The hunger and social are starting to decrease. I was kind of worried, I'm not gonna lie, that within the first couple of days, starvation is gonna be the biggest threat. We're still only on day one, and already starvation's starting to kick in. <gasps> she also has the paranoid tray. Oh my gosh, Laurie, that's actually perfect because obviously we'd spend the whole time being super paranoid about what is happening above ground. And bless her, most of her day is just spent in here talking to the toilet. I really thought she would be able to have a server friend to play with, but it seems like that is not the case. Instead, her only friend is the toilet. The only person she's got to talk to. She's telling it jokes and it sprayed water when it found it funny. And now she's like, you're fun and I'll talk to you, but I need to wash my hands after talking to you because she's still a toilet, you know? And I've got her to practice a little bit of sparring. You need to keep yourself in good shape. If you're underground particularly, there's not a lot of moving around you can do. So I feel like to stop yourself just wasting away, you'd have to do a lot of physical activity to keep yourself at peak strength because a healthy body may have a better chance against uh, radiation as well. I actually don't think radiation works like that, but there's other sicknesses and bugs you can get down here. So you'd have to try and keep yourself in good shape. And it's back to talk to the toilet again. First day has actually been kind of low key, quite depressing for the poor girl, I have to admit. The good thing is though, we're getting pretty good growth. I'm getting her to research everything. I know it can't really do much. She can't plant that one, which is annoying. I don't know why, because she can plant those ones, like uh, that one, but she can't plant that one. But whatever. I'm just doing this to try and like see if it helps the plants in any way, because the hunger situation is getting bad. She actually will become ravenous in 23 hours. So we've got some time. And since that one grape wouldn't plant, I'm going to allow her to eat that one grape since it didn't work. Everything else I sold, but she's had that one grape, which has actually put her in a final mood. <laughs> she's going to do a little bit of listening just to see if anybody is trying to contact her on her little radio tower. But of course, there is absolutely nobody else out there by the looks of it. So she is just gonna go ahead and head back to her little bedroom and get some shut eye in her lonely little bunker. I feel like her parents eventually, because if they rushed here, they probably got a bit of radiation. So she's okay. But her parents seem to have got uh, a little bit of, they're gone, basically. It's just her. She is the only one here. <gasps> and oh my gosh, I just saw all of my mushrooms start to sprout. Oh! Wow! Okay, mushrooms are a really good one for this because they seem to harvest really early. And don't trust this. This is a ghoul or some kind of radiation thing trying to give us headphones. No, I don't know what's going on with your eyes, but we're not going to open the vault and let you give us headphones. Okay, guys. Day two in the vault. We're still pretty much all on our own. However, the first of our harvestables have come out, so we're not thinking about further education. We're trapped in a bunker in a nuclear apocalypse. We're not thinking about that kind of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and let her harvest everything so that she can at least have her first proper meal. So we've got some mushrooms. I think we got carrots here as well. Yeah, we got mushrooms and carrots. Okay, this is good. And she's off to go have her morning conversation with her toilet. Oh, bless her. I feel so sad for her. Imagine your toilet 
a toilet being your only friend in the whole world. It's not really helping much with her social, I'm not gonna lie. There's nothing she can actually cook with the ingredients she's got. So I'm just gonna sit her here and give her her lovely meal of 42 mushrooms and carrots. Like literally, imagine this being your food for the day. Here is your lovely meal, enjoy. Oh no, I'm putting them on the floor. As if I couldn't make them any worse, now they've got floor juice on them. So she's just numbing all the stuff off the table, the poor girl. I'm hoping though this is gonna give us enough to get a hunger bar to the max. It's just literally raw, raw mushrooms and raw carrots. I mean, realistically, you'd boil some water and at least soften them a little bit, but not in Simland, you just eat the whole thing whole. And look at that, her hunger's actually awesome again, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop these back in here. You're now sitting and weeing on your best friend. It's considered rude, but maybe not if your best friend is a toilet. Oh my gosh, Servo Bot just sent us money. Who is Servo Bot? Why did you just appear and then disappear? I don't know. But doing a little daily workout, and then you're pretty stinky, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you have... Wait, just take a long bath. There's nothing else to do. I don't know where you got the lemons from, because I'm pretty sure you weren't growing those, but I will allow you to have a nice little bath, okay? Ooh, she's actually a genius too. What are all of her traits? Genius, paranoid, and good. And she is a commander, bold, imaginative, and strong-willed leaders. Always find a way or make one. Oh, that's pretty perfect for what she needs to do, which is survive a nuclear apocalypse. So I'm gonna get her to tend to her little fruits and veggies. Don't forget that once a second survivor arrives tomorrow, we are gonna have to try and make all this stretch out between two people, which is one big decision we're gonna have to think about when we decide whether we bring somebody else in or not, because it will definitely make our lives a little bit harder. But she's a good sim. So even though the genius in her is Helena, don't let somebody in. And the paranoid in her is like, oh my gosh, don't let somebody in. The good part of her is like, you have to try and save humanity. You have to bring in the other person who's outside, okay? And literally the poor girl, like, she needs a friend right now. Is she reading a romance book? I swear she's literally reading a romance book. Reel her in. Probably has never met another potential romance option in her whole life. And the only person she's ever had a real conversation with in the past, like, 10 years is Tommy the Toilet. It's actually called Talking John. Talking John the Toilet, who, you know what? They are full-on best friends. Look at this. Full-on best friends. Her only friend, really. Her social's tragic. So, time for dinner. <laughs> a carrot and a mushroom in enjoy your really exciting dinner. I'm so sorry, Charlie. I mean, how are you even holding that carrot? I do not know. And uh, there's your mushroom. Wow. What an exciting din dins for you. Let me see your pit boy. Ooh. Oh, look at that. That's so cool. Oh my gosh. Wow. And I guess it's just back to talking to the toilet. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're dancing. Oh, bless her. There's something quite free and fun about that, isn't there? Just like in alone in the vault on your own. Having a dance. I kind of love that. There you go. Have yourself a little dance. Your situation may be sad, but your spirit is still good. And that's the main thing. So just have yourself a little boogie. What I've also got ahead and placed here is I'm going to pop them in her inventory because we've got hazmat suit. We've got uh, what's this? A spore filter. We've also got the key card to get in and out of this lab. She's actually got two hazmat suits because look, I can combine these two. Two hazmat suits, which is going to be pretty important for tomorrow. So day two is coming to an end. The hunger situation is fine. She's good enough at gardening and she's tried hard enough in this little grow room that hunger is not an issue. Social, however, is fully tragic right now. So I'm going to send her to bed with a heavy heart. Missing human human interaction as we finish day two. But day three brings a little surprise for you guys. It's not because I read the rules at the beginning, but you get what I mean because day three brings our stranger. So the rules of day three is a survivor appears outside the vault. So I say we go ahead and search for a survivor again using our Claire Siobhan NPC. We added a girl last time. We also had a girl servo bot. So I think we'll add a boying this time, but it has to again be somebody pretty tough looking and with the right skill set to have survived all this time. Maybe they were also in a vault and kind of escaped out the vault, but either way, they've gone ahead and found Vault 101, which is ours. Okay, let's check out Jacob Say. Is that how I pronounce that? It's by Putov Chu. And I'm gonna remove like any like accessory stuff. Ooh, let me take his lips off though. I can have those back. But his little thing here, I'm gonna take off because like us, he's gonna be a vault dweller. He'll have come from a vault. So he is gonna be wearing just pretty simple stuff. I'll make him vault 81 and I'll give him his pit boy as well. <laughs> so here he is, our next little vault dweller who's coming to knock on our door. Um, and we have to decide whether to give him refuge or not. 
So back down here, we've got poor little Charlie looking very, very miserable, probably because she has to go sit and like do a morning poop on her best friend, which is the toilet. Not ideal. She's also kind of hungry, but that's fine because we've got a load more stuff ready to harvest. However, her normal, very simple, very non-stressy, but quite boring day is about to get a lot more interesting. Look how gray and grim the sky is today. But also we've got a paranoid, like quite nervous and quite stressed looking person outside our vault asking for permission to get inside vault 101, which is ours. We can see him on the camera here. So I feel like this would actually scare the life out of her for 10 years. She's never heard from anybody else. Just in here doing her little plant watering, doing her own thing. And then next thing you know, this will suddenly start kicking to life and it'll be like, hello, hello, can you let me in? She hasn't even a chance to have a nice little morning mush mushrooms yet. That's how sad things are. And she's going to have to for the first ever time go all the way upstairs. I mean, it's four flights of stairs. It takes a really long time to get up here and she can check on these monitors who it is that is outside trying to get in. So up the stairs we go. We're four floors deep into the ground, which is why it takes so long to get to the top. She's heartbroken because she's so lonely at this point. But we can see on the monitors that we've got a little visitor outside trying to gain access, trying to gain refuge into our vault. Now she's gonna have to decide what to do, whether to let him in and risk the radiation leaking in, risk her own safety, or whether to leave him outside and keep herself safe. Now we know that she's a good sim, so I do kind of feel, although she has a bit of a cheeky reputation, I don't know how she has a reputation when she's inside, but whatever, we're gonna go ahead and open up one of the little, these little, I'm gonna say little door flap thing, check out a little radiation suit for him, ask him to wear one, and we're also gonna go ahead and wear one. Wow, it is a full on suit. Look at that. A full on suit that little Charlie Parley has on right now. And we're gonna head outside and see who the stranger is. Oh my gosh, look how paranoid she looks. She looks so nervous doing this, but she's a good sim. So we're gonna go ahead and introduce ourselves to him. Find out what it is that he's doing here. He looks really stressed. He's been outside in this like broken apocalyptic. Stop going by car, you're ruining my immersion. But this sad apocalyptic world traveling across the wasteland for who knows how long? And oh my gosh, they're actually having a little bit of an argument. I think she doesn't particularly want to let anyone else inside. Okay, wow. Full on the two of them having an argument about whether hit to get him in or not. Definitely our two survivors aren't getting on particularly well now. She still gets on better with the toilet. We've popped him inside the little scanner so we can see just how radiated he is. Because he may have arrived in his jumpsuit, but he didn't have uh, like the full on radiation outfit, did he? Okay, so we're gonna say fine, you can come inside. However, However, we are gonna plant a little bug on him just so that we can like check what he's doing, why he's here, but also track his radiation levels. These two really don't get on like, wow, 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 wow. And we'll bring him in here where he will be able to take off his radiation suit because these things like spray anti rants all over them. They're actually both in really bad moods. I guess being underground for a long time wouldn't do um, amazing things for your social skills, let's face it. But both their little rad suit are off now. So we can bring him downstairs and into Vault 101 with his little bug on the back of him there. They actually already both hate each other. <laughs> Disliked. Imagine meeting the first other like sign of humanity in all this time and you don't even get along very well with him. That would literally suck so much. So I guess you give him the brief tour. She's like, we used to have a robot, but I don't know where it went. It disappeared. All very strange. And we'll give him his breakfast, a carrot, and also a a mushroom. Enjoy! So I guess as well, they've got to like share all resources now. Not just food, but also bed, toilet. Not bed. There's it's a single bed, so they won't be able to share the bed. They're gonna have to like sleep in turns, which kind of sucks because one of them's getting true days and nights and the other isn't. But if you're in a vault, does it even matter? I don't know. We should probably also go and introduce him to our favorite friend in the whole of the world. Here is John. Trust me, he's been my only friend for the past 10 years and I feel like he's just like, oh, Oh. He's like literally shocked. He hates the toilet. He hates the toilet. I don't know what the story is. Maybe his vault, like the air filtration system or the water or the anti-radiation, something broke, which is why he's come to ours. And I don't think he's particularly happy about his new living quarters. Maybe his old vault was better. Maybe it was worse and that's why he's an angry person. I don't know what his situation is, but he's not the happiest. Irregardless, even if you are angry, if you're here, you are gonna have to help out. So we just have to go read 
read. Okay, after you've got in a better mood, please come and help me with the gardening, okay? Okay, I feel like whatever robot was in their lab was definitely the one that did the gardening for them because he doesn't even have, have any gardening skill. But he's in here trying to... Okay, maybe not so much. Trying to help out at least. And he's in a bad mood again. Literally being around her just makes him really angry. I don't know why. We're a good sim as well. However, he seems to know his way around the little kicking thing. So they must have had that in their vault as well. Oh, very good. Very impressive. And oh, she wants to go and try and talk to him again. He is still bugged. Okay, we still not getting on. No, we're still not getting on very well. What is it about your personalities that's making you clash so much? I do not know. But I'm gonna listen in on him and see if that gives us any answers. Okay, she's got that bug planted. Oh, that screen to me says there's probably a little bit of radiation that he's brought in as well, which will be what kicks off day four. Fun times, radiation. Not sure how well he'll take being listened in on, but I guess if he doesn't know, he's just an angry man. Why are you such an angry man? I don't know. You're meant to be a provider, ESFJ. Don't tell anyone, okay? Not even your cut. Charlie received a basic audio recording. What does that even mean? Oh, wow. And they just came in here and they're having a little dance together. Okay, that's kind of sweet. And time for their sad little foodies together. I really thought finding another survivor would make her happy that she'd actually have someone to socialize with that isn't a toilet. But honestly, they definitely sort of hate each other. I'm not even gonna lie. They're just not getting on in any way, shape or form. I'm kind of leaving them to it. I'm trying not to get involved and force anything. They're also about to have an argument because it's getting late and there's only one bed here. But yeah, a lot of reading and ignoring each other rather than actually socializing. L literally just stood next to each other, not talking to each other. Oh, and back to being mischief. Why do you guys hate each other so much? I don't know what it is. She'd rather talk to a plan. Okay, adding a survivor really did not help with her social in any way, shape or form. We <laughs> she's off to go to Tell him to go. Are you about to tell him to leave the vault? Ooh, she was gonna tell him to leave the vault altogether now. But it's fine, whatever. It is the end of day three. I'm gonna go ahead and send her to bed. However, not only is our survivor quite rude, I don't know why he's so rude, but he is. The other issue is day four brings a new challenge. With day four, with the survivor being allowed in, radiation has started to leak into the bunker. So I am gonna go ahead and turn on life's tragedies and enable them in the save file. Now for now, life's tragedies are gonna be set to no serial killers. Okay, I'm gonna have to switch quite a lot off because it's only the sickness that I actually want to bring along with this. So disable car accidents because we're in a vault. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue. We're also gonna disable armed robberies, kidnapping, and also bullies. So the only thing we've got on is the fatal illness tragedy, which is of course radiation. And the tragedy current speed for now is gonna be set to very slow. We've only got a little bit of radiation. So by the end of this day, it will be slow. We'll wake up tomorrow with it medium and then it will keep snowballing from then onwards because more and more radiation will start to leak into the vault. Now these guys are gonna have to kind of get along if they want to work together and survive their time in the vault because I mean, it's so tragic that her first human, they both hate, but we are only on day four and this is a whole week challenge. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the video there. There's scary part of his challenge has now begun. We survived starvation. We survived loneliness. We even survived Jacob. However, will we survive life's tragedies, fatal illnesses, which is my radiation poisoning? Let's find out in the next episode. So if you guys have enjoyed this challenge, give it a big cheeky thumbs up. If you want to see part two, let me know in the comments below. I will upload this to the gallery so that you guys can play as well. And I will see you guys in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!